You know, Senator Sanders likes to say he'll need a record turnout to defeat Donald Trump. He's right. And we're the campaign that's going to do that record turnout. If you want a nominee, we'll bring the party together. We'll run a, a, a positive, progressive vision for the future, not turn this primary into a campaign of negative attacks, because that will only reelect Donald Trump if we go that route. Joe Biden in Missouri yesterday, and we're joined now by his last remaining opponent, Senator Bernie Sanders, joins us from Grand Rapids, Michigan this morning. Senator Sanders, thank you for joining us. Boy, what a difference a week makes. When you joined us last Sunday, you were leading in delegates, looked poised for a big lead coming out of Super Tuesday. Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Elizabeth Warren, Michael Bloomberg, all still in the race. How surprised were you by Super Tuesday, and how do you explain it? Well, one of the things that I was kind of not surprised by is the power of the establishment to force uh, Amy Klobuchar, who had worked so hard, Pete Buttigieg, who, you know, really worked extremely hard as well, out of the race. What was very clear from the media narrative and what the establishment uh, wanted was to make sure that people coalesced around Biden and uh, tried to defeat me. So that's not surprising. Uh, we are taking on, George, as I think everybody knows, the establishment. We're taking on the corporate establishment. Uh, we're taking on the political establishment. And uh, what you are seeing now just in the last few weeks is Wall Street, uh, the healthcare industry, the billionaire class putting a lot of money into Joe's campaign. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know what? I think we're going to win this thing. Uh, we won in California. We won in Utah. We won in Colorado. Uh, we won in Vermont. We won three states' popular votes uh, before that. And I'm looking forward to the uh, primary here in Michigan and in the state of Washington, other places as well. But as you know, Joe Biden now has a majority of the popular vote as well from all the states that voted. He voted. He won 10 states on Tuesday. It wasn't just the establishment. It was the voters as well. And now he's got a new endorsement just right. this morning. Here was Kamala Harris. One of the things that we need right now is we need a leader who really does care about the people and who can therefore unify the people. And I believe Joe can do that. He is a, a public servant who has always worked for the best of who we are as a nation. And we need that right now. There is so much at stake in this election, guys. She is now the ninth former candidate to endorse Joe Biden. So it goes beyond uh, the establishment. And as she made the point there that it's Joe Biden who is unifying well, the Democratic Party. Yeah. Well, let me just say this. Later on today, uh, we're going to have uh, the support, I believe, here in Grand Rapids of Jesse Jackson. Uh, and as I think you well know, you know Jesse, Jesse has been uh, one of the great civil, light, civil rights leaders in the modern history of this country. He changed American politics. Uh, with the concept of the Rainbow Coalition bringing blacks and whites and Latinos together in 84. In 88, he has been a leader in helping to transform this country, an aide to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we're proud. Look, we have the support of virtually every major grassroots organization representing millions of workers, black and brown and white. We have the support of a number of major unions in this country. This is no secret, George. You know politics. We're not going to get the support of most elected leaders, not most governors, not most senators. But we are winning the support of grassroots America because we have an agenda that speaks to working people. Our agenda says that health care is a human right. Our agenda is very different, and our record is very different than uh, Joe Biden's. Joe Biden voted for the war in Iraq. I helped lead the opposition. Here in Michigan right now, the trade agreements like NAFTA and PNTR with China were disastrous cost 160,000 jobs here in Michigan because American workers were forced to compete against desperate people in Mexico and China. Cost over 4 million jobs nationally. I led the effort against those disastrous trade agreements. Work with the unions. Joe voted for those trade agreements. Joe has been in the past on the floor of the Senate talking about the need to cut Social Security, Medicare, Veterans Program as part of a so-called balanced budget. Effort. I strongly oppose that. I believe we have to expand Social Security. Joe is now getting his funding from at least 60 billionaires, not to mention a super PAC. We get our funding from the grassroots and working families averaging $18.50. People understand the difference. We are in a crisis in America, not only in the need to defeat Donald Trump, the most dangerous president in modern American history, but to take on the greed and corruption of corporate elite. 
of the corporate elite. That is what our campaign is about. It's very different than Joe's. You outspent him on, on, on Super Tuesday. But let me pick up on one of the points you were making. You talked about Social Security. As you know, Vice President Biden has also said he wants to expand Social Security benefits. And the president has actually picked up on your attacks. Here was a tweet he sent out this week. He said, I will protect your Social Security and Medicare just as I have for the past three years. Sleepy Joe Biden will destroy both in very short order, and he won't even know he's doing it. As I said, Vice President Biden said he's going to expand Social Security benefits. You don't take him at his word? Okay. No, I do. Look, no, Joe is a friend of mine. And by the way, you know, I have said that if Joe wins, I'll be there for him to defeat Trump. He has said he'll be there for me to defeat Trump. We're agreed on that. But I think in the course of a political career, members of the Senate, members of the House have to cast difficult votes. I cast a vote against the so-called Defense of Marriage Act, which was a homophobic act brought by the right wing. Back then, it was not an easy vote. Joe voted for it. Uh, I voted consistently against the Hyde Amendment, which denies women in this country the ability to control their own bodies in terms of abortion. Uh, Joe voted for it. So what I'm saying here is that People want somebody who has a history of standing up and making the tough decisions in tough times. The war in Iraq, it was not so let easy. Me, let me, let me do, I know you, you brought up the war in Iraq. Do you really believe war. there's any difference between you and Joe Biden right now on gay rights or abortion rights going forward? Yeah, I think I have. Well, look, I mean, if you judge somebody by their records, I have been there. I have a 100 percent pro-choice voting record. I was there when the going was tough. Joe was not. In terms of gay rights, in terms of, you know, as I mentioned, the defense, so-called Defense of Marriage Act, it was not an easy vote, as you will recall. And when I cast and said, no, you know, uh, marriage is not just between a man and a woman. People have the right to marry whoever they want, regardless of their gender. That was a tough vote in Vermont. Uh, in terms of whether or not gays have the right, uh, had the right to uh, be in the military. Uh, this don't ask, don't tell, but I was on the right side of that issue. Uh, Joe was not. So all that I'm saying here, and I like Joe, I really do, is that people have a right to know who is going to be there when the going gets tough. Voting against the Wall Street bailout. You know, I voted against that. Joe voted for it. Uh, there are real differences. It was differences also backed by President record. Obama, Nancy Pelosi, Ted Kennedy, your own senior senator from Vermont, Pat Leahy. That's right. That's right. They're all wrong? That's right. But it was... Yeah, of course. I, what I said then, and I say now, you don't give trillions of dollars in zero interest loans to Wall Street and large corporations all over this country. If you wanted to bail out Wall Street, the way you do it is ask the wealthiest people in this country who helped cause the crisis to start paying their taxes so that we could do what had to be done. And right now, the bailout of Wall Street, we bailed out Wall Street, and yet you got half of the people in this country living paycheck to paycheck. More recently, Trump is giving tax breaks to billionaires. You've got a half a million people sleeping out on the street. What our campaign is about is getting our priorities right and really finally having a government that represents let's, working people and not just the billionaire class. Let's look ahead to next Tuesday. We heard from Nate Silver at 538. He crunched the numbers and showed you have almost no chance of getting a plurality of delegates without a win in Michigan. Do you agree that Michigan is make or break for you? No, I don't. I've been asked this make or break as you well know, George, you know a little bit about politics. Make or break since Iowa, since New Hampshire, since Nevada. Every state is important. Michigan is very, very important. Last time around, in 2016, I was told, impossible, you can't win Michigan. In fact, the day before the election, we were 20 points down in some of these polls. I think we got a great shot to win in Michigan. I think we got a great shot to win in Washington, maybe some other states as well. We got a long, long way to go to the Democratic nomination, and we're going to fight uh, for every vote that we can get. Final question. If it becomes clear, though, in the next month that you cannot get a plurality, you will not be heading to the convention with the lead, will you drop out or take this all the way to the convention? Look, let, we will fight for every vote that we can as, we're, as we try to win this election. I'm not a, a masochist who wants to stay in a race that can't be won. But right now, that's a little bit premature. Let's not determine what will happen on Tuesday and what will happen in the future. I think we got a great chance to win in Michigan, Washington, New York State, some of the major states that are coming up. And I think the people in those states have a right to cast a vote 
for the candidate that they want to see become president of the United States. Senator Sanders, thanks for your time this morning. Of course, we're all going to be watching on Tuesday. Thanks very much. Thank you, George. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.